All right, hello and welcome. My name is Jason Welsh, and today we're going to be looking at electrotyping. Electrotyping is taking an object and making a copy of it, okay, using a process. And I'll just kind of go over what that process is in the video. This is just a basic um, intro video to the to the video to show you the outcome of it. So this is my or the original. And for educational purposes only, I wanted to see if I can make a duplicate of it. So here is the duplicate. White metal. Uh, this is probably porn in a mold. And this was grown in a bath. So, I hope you enjoy the video. Again, um, if you're into electroforming, this video is very useful. If you haven't been doing electroforming, um, this video is going to be quite confusing sometimes because I skip the process of, you know, like the bath and how to make the bath and all that good stuff. So, I would highly suggest if you're, you're new to electroforming, Learn how to electroform first because electrotyping, even though electrotyping is older than electroforming, um, my skills with electroforming actually made it possible to do this object very detailed, in my opinion. Okay? So you, you can learn it whatever way you want. You know, start out with the hardest first, I guess. But uh, electroforming was quite useful to know before I went and did the electrotyping process of copying this object. All right, enough talk. Enjoy. First off, I need to make a mold. So I start with a piece of acrylic or glass, doesn't really matter, and a hot glue gun. This thing is hollow on the inside, so what I want to do is to be able to stick it down to the plexiglass and not leave any gaps. So I'm going to fill it with hot melt. I'm trying not to burn myself because you know the motto, now that just burn yourself, you get over with. And Leave it go. Just naturally let it cool off. If I ever want to take it off the plexiglass, fun fact is rubbing alcohol will totally make um, hot melt not adhere to anything. So you can take it right off with rubbing alcohol. Okay, we gotta let that dry. All right, so the next step is you encase the area in painter's tape. So look, I got like this little kind of like square area, and that's where I'm gonna pour the silicone into. You can make this any way you want. Some people use Legos, so you can use Legos too. But uh, I don't like how Legos have the little dots. So in most cases, I'll just use a piece of plexiglass and painter's tape. Okay, you're going to need the following. Two frat boy cups. Paint thinner, cornstarch, silicone one, must say silicone one on there, a knife to open this, which I'm missing that, so gun, Plastic silverware. This looks like metal, but it's really plastic. 
plastic fork, plastic knife. Be right back. All right, now. You have to work fast with this stuff because it takes only a few minutes to dry. Not dry fully, but dry enough to be annoying. So I have one shot at this. The formula is the following. 50-50. So 50% silicone. And 50% cornstarch depending on how much you need. To fill that mold over there, I'll probably need one half of a solo cup. Wear gloves. You do not want this on you. It takes a long time to come off. Okay, now this ratio is always different. What you want to do is thin the stuff so it's not annoying. So I will add a little bit of paint thinner and stir this with the fork. And it'll make a gross squishy sound. And this is where you don't breathe too much, so I'm going to try not to talk too much during this. I think it's acetic acid? Yeah. So breathe through mouth, not through nose. But you really don't want to inhale too much of this stuff. So just a little thinner. And you can't go wrong with the recipe. It just takes a little longer to dry. Stir it with a plastic fork, you got the right recipe. If you're having a hard time, add more thinner. Okay, set that to the side. Put cornstarch in a frat boy cup. You might want to do this over the trash. Okay. Okay, this is where you have no going back. Okay, so you add the cornstarch in, and over the garbage, stir. And now the plastic fork is going to be halfway eaten, so you switch over to the plastic knife. It should start looking like buttercream frosting. If it's too thick, add more thinner.
Okay, so this is what it looks like. Buttercream frosting. Okay. Try to stir the stuff to the bottom. By now it's going to start getting a little harder to stir and that's when you have to work fast. Okay, so you're going to take your finger and take this and coat the model in a thin layer of the stuff. And you're working this stuff into all the cracks and crevices, massaging it in. kind of a wetting the surface with it. Because you don't want air bubbles in there. Any air bubbles you want is a little bit towards the middle. It doesn't really matter too much on those. Okay, now the weight of the rest of this stuff should filter out the rest of the air bubbles. Again, put a little bit in there, work it around with the knife. And there we go. Now we do not have to get it perfectly level on top because we're going to be in cutting that with a knife so it's flat. So you can go ahead and leave it as unconsciously weird as you want. Now it looks like I made about a hundred times more than what I needed, so... Now, I'm going to take this little wooden placard and just kind of run it a lot of pressure and I'm going to go on more and what I'll do is push out any bubbles that might have got to that first layer Here we go. Not too bad.
Now, trust me, I've done this like a thousand times. I walk like teenagers how to make molds in my class. So, um, <laughs> it actually is a lot messier than this. It's only because I've done this a few times. So, if you want to do this, I wouldn't do it in your living room. I would do it in a really masked off area. Cornstarch is going to get everywhere. Uh, any of this on your hands is going to last quite a while because it's waterproof. And yeah, just like that. Don't try to clean up anything until it dries. If it dries, you can peel it off, but not off your hands. All right, so I hope you enjoyed. Uh, we'll go on to the next step once this dries. All right, so here's the scarab beetle in the mold. Um, the legs were not flat, so I had to use a knife like this. And these are great for cutting silicone. So, in other words, if I want to make this mold thinner, I could very easily, it's just a matter of real slowly working it back and forth on the silicone. It's like slicing cheese. So be very patient with it. Alright, after I hacked all that out though, should come right out of the mold. Nice and slowly. Perfect. Let's see, I gotta look at this real close. Yeah, I'm not seeing any air bubbles whatsoever. Okay. So. The next step is what I'm going to do is put graphite paint in here. I'm just looking for a brush sufficient enough to do that. Yeah, there we go. So I use a camel hair brush, they're really fine. And this jar is just filled with graphite powder. Um, do not try to be neat with this. You're actually going to end up sawing off the rest if you do something like this. This will show every flaw that the mold has too. See a little chunk of goodness down in there. really work work it down into every crack and crevice And with working with graphite powder, do not breathe this stuff in. Ooh, it's horrible for you.
cool. So I am going to continue to do this. Plus, I'm going to go a little further out with it. Again, I can always trim this stuff later. I don't want to make too much, but you'll see why in the next part of the video. Alright, so I'm going to kind of look over this real closely and go over any areas that I missed. But you can see the graphite really does stick nicely to this type of silicone. Alright, next up is to create a rubber wheel or rubber bar to go all the way around the object. So if this could be made out of 12 gauge or 14 gauge copper wire, bare. Then you get stranded wire. And unfortunately, you have to get some thicker stranded wire for this. Um, so, what I got is 10 gauge copper. And I know this is bare wire because I have to strip it. And then I get these strands. And for each strand, it's about, I want to say, like 28 gauge copper. Somewhere around there. Okay, I'm just going to poke this through. And this is why it has to be a little bit thicker strands. I'm going to poke this through. mold this mold turned out pretty thick and when you do this part you want to wrap it a couple times around the wheel Just like that. Now you're going to insert one here, and here, and here. Alright, I'm going to do that off camera. Alright, so the next step is just to retouch up some of the areas that are touching these wires. Making sure there's not a lot of, or any, like loose powder. So you do not want a loose carbon floating around in your tank. If you do this enough, like I played around with carbon before in my tank, you might have to filter the tank. Um, after, you know, like let's say I did three of these guys, I would probably have to filter that tank using a five micron filter. Uh, five microns, you can go to any hardware store, find a sweeper bag in your um, yeah, sweeper aisle, and then cut it to be some kind of funnel. And then you could funnel your liquid through that five micron bag. Cool. I use like maybe a uh, half a liter bottle. In fact, let me show you that because that's really actually something I do a lot. So, water bottle. We all have these laying around. Cut the butt off. 
I'm going to cut the sweeper bag so that I have a natural funnel that goes down in here and you can pour your liquid through and it will filter it. So, And vacuum bags are really cheap. The <laughs> 5 micron filters, if you go to buy those on like Amazon, they're like almost 10 bucks each where 6 bucks will buy you 3 bags. Alright, so in case you need to filter your liquid afterwards, that's how you do it. Alright, so he's ready for the tank. Alright, so there we go. He's in the solution. I just wanted to talk about the solution. The solution is not the solution that I show you how to make in one of the videos. This solution, I will put a recipe down below in the video. Um, it is a little bit different on the, the concentrations of chloride in the solution, and it has a additive um, murlax, which is a laxative, uh, which is the glycol um, in murlax, works as a smoothing agent or a wetting agent. Uh, some call it brightener, but that. So altogether, this solution is geared more towards stuff like this. High throw, lots of detail. Um, you can see that I only have actually two of my pipes running right now. I don't have them all together. I don't need that much. And with something like this, what you want to do is start with a really low amperage, like 0 0.07 amps, even though that it calculates to be 1.1 amps per inch, and this is like almost 2 inches, I'm not going to run it at full amperage until it starts building up a little bit of copper on it. Graphite, you know, like you don't want to, it, be, it acts as a fuse, okay, so if you run too much current through it, it'll screw up the fuse. So, low and slow for many hours, many, many, many hours. And, the camera light's going to go nuts here, so I'm going to try to avoid that. So right now it's 0 0.05 amps. And you can see kind of it dancing around like that. Yeah, that's going to happen. I might raise it by a little bit more. around there so it's going to be like 0 0.07 to about 0 0.1 amps cool I do like this uh, meter for this it's, it's called a drock drok it is just a, one of these power boxes without all the fancy stuff in it. These are great for bigger tanks, so the drop is pretty good, but um, I don't know. Like, if you're new to electroforming, I would stick to one of these because there's more help and support where that other thing, you have to have a little bit of knowledge with you know, like volts and amps and how to adjust that. So I would stick to one of these if you're really new at this. It's a doctor meter, 305M. And while I'm here, I just run through my other tanks. Why not? This one doesn't have very much in it. This one has my supply chain. This is about two and a half gallon. 
It was about two gallon. So the difference between this tank, this tank is my texturing tank, I call it. So it's low throw. This is the, the formula that I shared with on a video before. And what its job is, and it's quite imbalanced right now, but it's supposed to, I keep it that way. So I can get stuff like this, okay? And when this gets too out of hand, what I do is move it over to my high throw tank. And the high throw takes and evens that out. See if I can get that to focus. Cool, so I add texture using one tank and then I smooth out that texture by filling in the small details and cracks and crevices using a high throw. And what that allows me to do is not have to polish or sand or scrape anything. All right, I'll check back on the little bug here in about four to six hours. Okay, so about four hours later, I have something that looks like this. It's doing really good. I'm not really good at using one of those hand saws at all. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this Okay, put the little camera up just a little bit. There we go. Molding builder. Okay, this is not what this mold is made out of. This is latex. This is what I use to mask off crystals so the acid doesn't eat them. And what I'm going to do... is take a little bit of this and these areas are cut out so you can see this is what it looks like right now the the original okay now if you could imagine trying to cut all these little holes <laughs> no siree bob okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take and mask off those areas so that no this is already just a little just thin copper that way no thick copper can build up there so, yeah so just Bob Ross all the way happy little tree Alright, as you can see, watching me paint this entire thing will be boring. So, you got the general gist of it. Paint anything that you don't want to cut out with a saw. After that, stick it back, well, let it dry by about you know, 20 minutes because it's a real thin coat of latex. This circuit's already completed, so from this wire to here is completed. So, in other words, if I put stuff right here, it's not going to block that connection because it's going to go underneath that. See how it works? Yeah. Alright, cool. Well, I'm going to do this and see you after I put it back in the solution and let it go for a few more hours. Alright, so there we go. Now, one thing I would say is when you do this, if you do this, rotate the mold. Okay, so uh, every, 
don't know, like four to six hours, start rotating the mold like this in the bath after it's grown a little bit of copper. So make sure it has the initial copper on it. And then after you see the initial copper, then rotate every four to six hours. Um, I get a lot better deposit that way. Uh, I know this is probably sufficient growth for what I want. So I'm gonna start clipping these off. Yeah, clip both sides and start pulling it away from the mold. So I'm going to do that. Just kind of work it around. Watching some of those edges because they are sharp. Pulling molds is a patience thing. Especially since these have wires that go into it. like that. Um, plan on using, <laughs> that's so cool, so that plan of using um, latex worked quite well. Constantly rotating this mold, constantly pulling up on it. You say I know the graphite stuck to it. Look at that. I didn't have to trim one thing. That's so fun. I'm just going to shine the light through this for you. You can see that there's just a little bit of trimming, but there's no use of this thing. This is a saw.
mainly what I can use. It's probably. Very slow nipping. And there's that edge right there. Okay, so let me show you one that I did just before this, because I always kind of do two as a beta test. This one I didn't do that. And I had to key or saw it. Our jeweler saw it all the way around. So this is what they look like after you're done. This one has a little bit thinner deposits on the inside, but it still turned out good. I will say this one was hard to pull out of the mold. Very hard compared to my last one. last one, I used this two-part putty called Amazing Molding Putty. You can get this on Amazon. Here is the box. That. Moldputty.com. Fun. Here's the original. Again, more of a science thing than anything else. I don't know what I would do with a whole bunch of these things, but other than I don't know, decorate something. But I really wanted to just try to see if I could do it or not. So that is called electrotyping. Low and slow. If you're into electroforming, you have to go low and slow on these. If you're unsure how to do all the chemical process and all that other stuff, those are all uh, that's already been documented in the videos. Um, so make sure that you probably you know start out slow <laughs> to yourself and uh, first learn how to do electroforming before you go tackling one of these things. That's up to you though, you know, like I, I jump into the hardest first sometimes just because uh, I don't care if I fail. It's fun that way. And you learn a lot from that. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. May your electrotyping process be fruitful. Enjoy.